Exploring Abstract Method. Currently we are in section 18 and we are about to check out the second video of this section. So in this video we will check out the abstract method. So within our application, let us go ahead and define our abstract method. So how to define an abstract method? Of course you have to use again the abstract keyword. So down below here within the abstract class, we can use the abstract keyword followed by the public modifier and then let us define our eat method. And within this let us define our body. Now here we have some error. The abstract methods cannot have any body. So let us check out our rule number one. So whenever you define the abstract methods, the abstract method contains no method body. That is you cannot write any code within the abstract method. So here as per the rule we cannot define this statement here. Let us remove it and also the method body let us remove it and end the statement with the help of a semicolon. So this is the perfect definition of defining the abstract method in case of Java. Fine. Now you must be thinking since the method is blank, so what is the advantage of creating the abstract method? So for that let us look at our rule number two that it is mandatory to override the abstract methods in the child class. Now remember the animal can have the child class of dog, cat, lion and tiger and so on, right? So here let us define our class of dog which extends from the animal. So the animal is now our parent class. And within this, as per the rule number two, it is mandatory to override the abstract methods of the super class in our child class. Fine. So in our parent class animal, we have one abstract method of eat. And as per the rule, we have to override this method within our child dog class. So here is the error. The dog class must either be declared abstract or implement the abstract method eat in the animal class. So here what we have to do, let us override our eat method by using public void and eat. Now once you do it, you will find the at the rate override annotation. So whenever you override any method, always remember just use at the rate override annotation so that it will notify the compiler that we are actually overriding a method within our child class. And now within this method, let us define our code. This time dog is eating. Perfect. Now how to call this method of eat? So for that within our main method here, you can go like this. We can define animal space animal. Now as per the rule, you cannot create any object of the animal class, which is abstract in nature. But you can actually create the reference variable of the abstract class, which is allowed in Java. So here is the comment statement for that. Perfect. Now you must be thinking since, since we are allowed to create the reference, so what is the advantage of that? Because you cannot instantiate the animal class. What I'm trying to say is here, you cannot use animal space animal equal to new animal. It is not allowed, right? But as per what we have learned in our previous video, you can actually create the reference variable of the parent class and on the right, you can actually instantiate the object of the child class. That is here, if you use dog object, then it is actually allowed. So basically on the left, we have the parent class reference variable of animal, which is pointing to the child class object. And such concept we have already covered in our previous videos. So please make sure you check out my previous video as well. And now using this object of animal one, you can actually call eat and also you can call animal one dot run. Perfect. So this eat method is simply going to trigger this method here within the dog class. And this run method, it is simply going to look for the run method within the dog class. Since it is not present, so it is simply going to call the run method within our animal class itself. If you run the code right now, then you will get the desired output. Now let us take a step ahead and further discuss more concepts. Since within the class of animal, which is abstract in nature, we have the public void run method, which is actually the normal method. So within the class of dog, which is the child class, you may or may not override this method. That is, if you override this method here, public void run method, then it is actually optional to override the normal method within the child class. You can actually remove it as well. It is totally up to your wish. 
But in case if we have the abstract method, then it is mandatory to override it within our child class. Always remember the rules that I have mentioned here. Perfect. So that's all for this video. So in this video, we basically checked out the abstract methods and also how to create the object and call the functions that belongs to the abstract class and methods. Well, to summarize what is the abstract method, you can say the method which is declared abstract is actually known as the abstract method. And the abstract methods contains no method body. That is, you cannot write any code within such method. And now it is mandatory to override the abstract method in the child class, which we saw just now. So that's all for this section. So coming up next in the next section, we will check out what are interface in Java.